because it's when we get stuck in that achievement, it's like, I've done, I've achieved, I'm at the top. And then we don't see the next peak. Then that's when we're on the, on the downfall. So we might think that our personal and professional development journey should be this like upward trajectory journey, week by week, month by month, year by year that we go on this linear path. And then we get up to the top and we turn back and we look around and we think, oh yeah, okay, I've had this uh, lots of growth and lots of transformation. But if it doesn't happen with our finances and we can go on this, what seems to be sometimes like a bit of a rocky road, but we eventually go up, then we're also going to have to appreciate that that also happens inside of our professional growth as well and our personal growth as well. So first of all, let's just define what stagnant growth is. So then you can say, yep, that's me. I feel like that's me at the moment. I've been there in the past. And so it's this period of time where we have little to no growth. It's this uh, plateau that we experience where we we stop asking quality questions, where we know, say, with the Martini method, which is what we focus at maximum growth, having you to ask quality questions, you stop asking those questions. You, you focus maybe if we have the being, doing and having aspect, the being, doing and having, we focus too much maybe on the do, on the being and we're just like be, and but then there's no effort to shift or change. There's no doing and have, and um, there's no doing aspect that kind of gets cut off. And so maybe some of the language you might say to yourself is like, I'm too old to change. That maybe doesn't apply to some of you because you're like, no, or, uh, but maybe it does. There's like, uh, but I've, I've done things this way for so long. It's the, the effort it takes to go and change is so great or the effort to go and learn something new is too much. I'm just going to keep in that comfort zone. And so what we can also notice is that we, we, it, we lose that sense of curiosity. You know what you love about like a child where they, they're they just curious to learn and learn more and ask questions, but why, why, why? And so that childlike curiosity can, can have a tendency to um, dissipate as we become more stagnant with our growth. And so we become too much in a way of creature of habit. One of the things that we keep on doing is we keep on doing the same thing and then expecting a different result or hoping for a different result, but not doing anything different. I know for me personally, when I, uh, up until um, up until I went to LA Breakthrough Experience just recently, part of that was there was a, a, a an, an aspect of that I felt like I was plateauing. Like I felt like I wasn't growing as much as I wanted to grow. And I felt like I, bored is not the word. Maybe, maybe you might have a, a, another word for me, but it was definitely, maybe you can relate, but it just felt like, hey, Muhammad, hey, uh, um, Simo, hey, Brendan. So, but just feeling like I've got so much more inside of me to give. And I want that to like, definitely want 2024 to be a rocking year. And I feel like I'm not quite stepping up to the plate in the way I wanted to. Hey, Andrew. And so the result of that is that there's this, like, I felt like a stagnant growth or just, I wouldn't even say growth. It was just stagnant. And so um, part of that stagnant growth for for some people is this like fear of attempting. It's, It's like, it's so much easier to stay in that comfortable zone than it is to the fear of going in. Well, what happens if I fail? What happens if people criticize me? What happens if I put all this effort in and then it just doesn't work? And, you know, what a waste. And so uh, what we want to understand is that there are uh, some outcomes that happen because we get stagnant, have stagnant growth. And one of the thing is, um, there's actually, we'll go through three of the top um, dynamics that change within your your body and your life as a result of stagnant growth. And you might find this interesting. Uh, and, and that is a reduced cognitive function. So I don't know if you know this, but they have a 75-year study that found that less uh, um, development correlates with a weaker or less like development in someone's life correlates with a weaker cognitive function later in life, which means that you've got more potential for depression, um, more vulnerability of like a cognitive decline. So as we challenge ourselves, because with that challenge requires us to think differently, requires us to stretch our brain, requires us to, you know, um, myelinate our brain in different ways. And so we're thinking and um, we're growing as opposed to decaying inside of our um, our cognitive function. So that's one of the upsides then of continually grow, growing. Another a challenge that happens when we stagnate with our growth is that we can never have poor 
poorer quality. So essentially it can be this uh, poorer quality of life because we've stagnated, which means we've maybe stagnated and we're not moving as much as we want to. We're not career developing ourselves. We're not wanting to develop in our intimate relationships maybe with our spouses. And so that results in more isolation, uh, less fulfillment, which changes your physiology, less movement, which your body gets stiff and sore and you're standing up just as an effort. And so, of course, that's going to lead into poorer quality of life um, and poor health. And then, and let's just face it, like the overall, if we stay in that stagnant growth, it's just a, a poor, like a, a decreased satisfaction in life. Because what happens is if we don't have that spark and fulfillment and we're not challenging ourselves, but we're doing what's easy, we do what's easy over and over again. It's there's not that that um, well, there's the sense of boredom, which maybe we end up doing more immediate gratification, do things that are just right now, what's going to be pleasing for me rather than pushing ourselves um and stretching ourselves. So uh there are some kind of dynamics around stagnant growth. And so why would we want to have growth in our life? Why would we want to have a different mindset around growing? And essentially is if you know, we have, if we can, if we can focus on this like ever dynamic and ever evolving life, because that's what it is. Life is constantly moving and there's growth, there's motion and growth in life. Like, so we also want to have that as well. We're not like the whole nature is not growing around us and moving around us. And we're like, I'm going to stay the same. I'm just going to stay here and hopefully nothing, you know, and everything else can change around. And no, we want to grow with it. We want to move with life. And so if what we want to do is kind of shift our mindset to have more of that growth the growth mindset. Now, uh, if we if we if we do a little bit of like um, a psychology theory, so there's a man and his name is um, Eric Erickson, and so he does the he actually has eight stages of development that that an individual would go through. And I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but I mean, the first is like trust and mistrust, which is that infant years. And then it's autonomy and shame and doubt. Or as the next one, it's initiative versus guilt with that toddler stage or preschool stage. And so we go up in our development. Normally the, the 20s and 30s is around intimacy or isolation. It's like because we're forming relationships and family. And then we get to that point where it's like uh, being able to uh, have our like focus on the bigger, wider community or we or we stagnate. And so there's this, this kind of 40 to 65 is that period of time where we can find ourselves going into that stagnation. And it's actually uh, what he described as one of the developmental stages or it's actually where people get stuck. I personally find um, when working with a lot of people and what we focus in at maximum growth is there's a there's a um, the teenage years between 12 and 18 is where you feel you're you're forming your identity or you have confusion. And so during that really formative years, if people don't have a strong sense of identity, they get stuck. And then even in their 60s, they're still trying to figure out, God, I don't even know who I am or I've just found out who I am for the first time or expressed who I am for the first time. And it's like now just kind of growing through that that developmental stage. So we can also have that when we get to that uh, stage seven, which is like um, that generative um, stage versus stagnation stage and so we're either generating and building and growing or we stagnate and so what we want to essentially do is there are a few things that you can do to kind of switch so that you get into a growth mindset or into a um, growing stage rather than stagnating and one would be the first one I can't go without it because that's what we're all about here at Maximum Growth is really about that growth mindset and you've probably heard it a million times before yeah Tanya I know what that is um, but that, but but to know it and to live it are two different things. To know it and then implement it in times where you stagnate is a very different kettle of fish because we want to empl- we want to employ it into our daily habit, into our life, into our mindset, which is why we do classes with you each and every week of that laying that foundation because. Sometimes when we go through challenge or we go through um, some some difficulties in our in our life, we can revert back to our old way of thinking and we forget to have a growth mindset. We just go back to our like an operating system that's here, and we're like, oh, hang on, I forgot my train. I've got my training, and so it's 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 kind of like the the moment where someone's uh, you know not not breathing and you go into freeze response because you're like, I don't know what to do, and you've forgotten your all your your training that you've done to do resus. Um, and so we want on those moments to be able to have our growth mindset. And so that 
part has growth mindset has embracing change. Change is happening around us all the time. And so we want to have an, a, will, a willing and an adaptability to change with what's going on. Uh, an example for uh, at the moment is like AI is really big. Hey, Justin, you know, AI is really big in, in say, um, growing in business. And I saw this really funny skit the other day on Instagram, which I, I sent to so many people because it just made me laugh with tears rolling down. And it was this idea that, uh, you know, in, in our generation, uh, when we become old and we're in our, you know, 80s and 90s, we'll be uh, our grandkids will be coming home with a robot. And we're like, you can't marry a robot. But times have changed. I mean, people are having relationships with um, different, different um, uh, like non-people. And so, and people are having relationships over the internet and they're actually seeing each other. So things are evolving. And so, so it say is, for example, AI. And so we want to embrace change instead of kind of resisting it because resisting it means we're in a sense also stagnating and not moving with the times, which is also kind of why I really loved, I put a fo- post out recently of uh, Martini on, on his phone because I was like, great, good on you. Good on you for being able to like be progressive and get up with the times, even though you're like, I haven't had a phone in X, Y, Z years. And now he's like being progressive. So it's about inv- embracing embracing change. We also want to be um, able to, as a growth mindset, we want to be able to um, foster like an ability to continually to learn because what keeps us stagnant is us going, nah, I don't want to learn. Uh, I've kind of had enough. I don't want to put that learning inside of me anymore. I've just, I've had enough. I'm like learning fatigue. And it's like, how can we spark that back up inside of you so the stagnant growth shifts and changes, and then you can get back into the game again. So it's like, what could you do to cultivate that learning uh, that learning streak inside of you? And then also just uh, our ability to adapt, uh, to adapt to the changing environment is, is, um, in, is um, also really important. So that's one, our growth mindset. The second aspect in order to shift from our stagnation is find your flow. And so what I mean by that is <clears throat> uh, we can have moments where we are, and I'm sure you've had it in your life and maybe they've been brief and fleeting or maybe they come uh, maybe a little bit more often for you, but just those times where you just feel like in flow. I mean, how else do you describe it? Where you just feel like so connected. If there was a greater, higher source, like connected in with that, you feel like there's this intrinsic motivation because it comes from within and you are just able to uh, connect with whatever it is that you're working on or doing whether it's in the state of writing speaking helping someone doing your your service but that it's like how do we how do we shift you if you're having stagnation into that finding flow again like what, sometimes it's like doing a life review and what are the moments that have helped you to find flow and how do we cultivate more of those moments because that's it's going to be like one, say, behavioral change that you can do that can then get you out of that stagnation because you're just putting yourself in. If you know, for example, <clears throat> speaking in front of people is going to get you into a flow and you haven't been because of for whatever reason, you've been hiding away from the world. Okay, great. Get yourself out in front of people and start speaking and then allow that to flow and then allow yourself to kind of like connect back in again And then let that, as a result, the stagnation starts to dissipate because you're doing more of the things that you love. So remember, we can do a mindset change, which is the changing the mindset and having a growth mindset. And we can also behavioral change. So we call it um, bottom up um, change. And then we have top down change. So we want to do a bit of both. Uh, And so the part of why we also want to find flow is because in those moments where we're going to do the difficult and easy part. Well, we don't even notice the difficult actually, because in flow, you're not thinking, oh, this is really hard. You're just in flow. And so you're, you're kind of more willing to kind of um, work and do what you love when you're in that space. And the result of that is it's kind of almost like tapping your mind and changing your mindset and it changes your physiology. And because your physiology changes, then going and sitting down and, I don't know, Netflixing for the day just doesn't even feel like something you would want to do because you're like, oh. I'm actually, it's like almost the switch comes back on and you feel alive again. So that could definitely be helpful in terms of um, helping you to kind of shift out of the stagnant growth. So um, a couple more things before we wrap up. One is uh, what's really important when we have our growth is we want to plan our growth and we want to recognize our progress. There are two aspects when when we're growing that are really important. 
One is if if we had if we're in the corporate world, we would want to have a developmental plan and um and, and growing out or professional growth plan so that we know where we're going and what are the skills we're going to learn and we're going to have a plan for that. We also want to maybe also consider doing that. We have a training plan. We go to the gym and we have our training plan. I'm going to follow these exercises and I know it's going to give me X, Y, Z. We have a financial plan, but why don't we have a plan for our our growth inside of our maximum growth um, academy? We have a um, we have a section. Uh, which is quite new inside of our section, which is around um, creating that growth plan so that you have uh, what we have like dissolve and level up in terms of uh, side A and side B of the application of the Martini method. So we set a growth plan in the different areas of life um, so that you know what you're working on, so you know where you're going, what are the things that you want to clear from an emotional point of view that will make a difference to your life. But we want to set those growth plans in place as opposed to be reactionary with our growth, we are more proaction, proaction. And then we also want to recognize our progress. Because let's face it, if we live in the world of uh, universal principles, we can sometimes have this uh, perception that, well, I better not celebrate that I just achieved something, better not celebrate because if I celebrate and I get high and excited and elated, then something bad is going to happen and I'm going to be humbled and then and then I'm going to have to um, reap the consequences of that. And it's like, you know, it's okay to just celebrate. I just want to say that. Like it's okay to celebrate. It's okay to take a moment and just say, wow, like look, look how far you've come. Look what you've done. Look what you've achieved. Okay, great. And then let's build on that. And what's the next thing you're going to focus on and create that void again? Because it's when we get stuck in that achievement, it's like, I've done, I've achieved, I'm at the top. And then we don't see the next peak. Then that's when we're on the on the downfall. But it's like, if we're at the top and then at that moment, we celebrate and appreciate, and then we create a new void ahead and we think, okay, what's the next level up? What's the next thing that I'm going to go and achieve? What's the next focus? And what's my next development plan that I'm going to uh, work towards now we've just created more growth ahead of us the reason why we stagnate is because we've hit a plateau because we've gotten to plan again so one thing i want you to be okay with saying you know great congratulations this is a great achievement you know we if you want to celebrate inside of uh, students of wisdom inside of maximum growth our inner circle that we have for our maximum growth members and you want to celebrate something and we will all cheer along with you and then it's like okay then what next so that is one thing to appreciate when it comes to your growth so as a wrap stagnant growth you're going to listen to your internal thinking you're going to feel it because you just know it it's a flat stage you're going through we want to also consider then how do we adapt that growth mindset which is why we do maximum growth each and every week so coming to class and then also that uh, finding flow like what is it maybe reflecting on some of those things that help find flow so we can kind of shift your physiology it'll also shift your perception as well and then we also want to do those growth plans as well as recognize our progress along the way. And yes, it is very okay to do that. So hopefully you found this helpful, insightful. I'd love to hear your comments below. We do actually have a workbook for this. So if it is something that you'd love the workbook, you just need to also hashtag workbook and we will get it into your hot little hands for you. If you're watching the replay, you'll find the workbook downloadable inside of this class. So this class will be up for the next seven days. So you will have to get in, make sure you do listen to it because it will disappear into the ether and it will be uploaded inside of Maximum Growth Academy. So if you are part of our membership, then you will get access to it for the lifetime of your membership. Hopefully you've been helpful. Hopefully some gold nuggets of wisdom for you in this session for today. Thank you for taking the time. I deeply appreciate you. All right, so we're also now on to our Ask Me Anything class for today. We have one question, unless there's another question out there and you have something bubbling up inside that you'd love to have a question asked or answered. The first question we have, let me just drop and drag this over so I can read it on the screen. Uh, and the question is, Tanya, I started the working on the wealth module in the Maximum Growth Academy, which I love. Um, and um, the mention says, I turn my learning into earning and that you create a strategy for courses that you attend. I was wondering if you could provide some insights into what that looked like for a strategy creation process and the thoughts behind this. Okay, so um, I've been a really big believer in uh, figuring out ways to get a return on your investment when you're going to go and do a course. 
there unless we uh, have an in, infinite amount of money and we can just keep on learning and learning and learning well then no problem doesn't matter how much you spend and doesn't matter how much um, each course is but if we if we have a business and we go and do learning because we're wanting to grow our skills if it was an employee who came along and said i want to do a, a course you would think well how am i going to get a return on my investment if i send you to this course what's the outcome that i'm going to get as a result and maybe it's like they're going to do a course on copywriting and then the result is i'm going to do copywriting sales uh, sequence afterwards and that result is going to bring, we're going to make sure that we get 20 sales and those 20 sales are going to bring in X amount. And that's going to get more than a return on the income of, of the cost of the course and the lost time that the, the employee is not going to be there. Uh, and then you've also made a profit. So you're thinking about that if it's an employee, but then for ourselves, we think, oh, no, just, I'm just going to go and spend money on, and do a course. So we also want to think about that in the same, in the same light. So it really depends on what the course is. It depends on what you are learning to depend if you can take that straight and put it into a into a program. So, for example, I'm thinking of um, so someone in our community who I really love and really value, and I did a four-part series just recently on human behavior, and there was one section in it, and I talked about sibling dynamics. I talked about this whole like sibling dynamic and what happens inside of that. Um, And so that's also put inside of the Maximum Growth Academy. So you get a little bit more information, a little bit more content. And then that information that they've done is also then they've been able to go and put that and adapt that into a course and add that into a course and then now go and sell that course and make a really big, um, more in-depth course on that one topic from the little snippet that they got from me, which I think is super amazing. Like, wow, like being able to grow and expand and take what what that was and and share it with the world and make money from it. Well, I'm going to I'm going to like totally fist pump that. And so you want to be thinking about that too. If you're going to go and do say a uh, um an event and you're going to go and t- spend there, you're going to think, "Okay, I'm going to set an objective that I'm going to do, I'm going to pick up, I'm going to have three hot leads that I'm going to convert and um nurture over the next month and then make sure that uh, it, it make sure that then I'm going to um, convert them into a sale and that sale is going to be worth X dollars. And then that, because of that, um, I get a return on my my investment. And so you're not maybe getting a return straight away, but it's a longer term um, in, investment. So these are ways, I mean, it depends. You can go and network when you're there and make money. You can take the content that you learn and make money. Um, you, you've just got to think about, it really depends. I know for me personally, when I go to say the breakthrough experience, one of the things of why I love going there, um, and also why I love doing maximum growth, because I know that it, I get, I get to help people to do the, this same thing, but on a weekly basis, rather than, um, you know, say you do breakthrough once a year, um, that, that concentrated space of time of me just sitting down and applying the Martini method. It may not be a direct a direct result of making money. Like I don't directly like I'm not sitting there and making money doing it. But but by by um, default, as a result of doing it, I've noticed my income increase because I've shifted, I've shifted shame and guilt, I've come become more of myself. I've um, you know just dissolved some of my subordinations. Um, I'm living and breathing the work that I share with people. I'm owning and identifying with it. Um, I have really cool stories to share. And so the byproduct of that, so it's not a direct income, but it's an indirect income results as a, as a, um, from doing the work. So then I noticed that it's not a direct, like I've taken the information and made money, but it's more a, um, a byproduct of like doing that learning or doing that application that then makes me money. So hopefully that's been helpful if you have been sitting in this idea that you do want to start turning your learning into earning, that maybe some of those ideas will help you to start to uh, create your own learning inside of um, the courses and the programs that you do.